In this video, I'm going to review how to make an interactive PDF in InDesign CC version 9.2. Now, this interactive PDF will be able to jump between pages. I'll also show you how to make a forward and back button in this video. So to start with, I'm I went ahead and opened up Adobe InDesign. If you notice, my version is version 9.2 at this stage. Um, and this is an InDesign CC. I'm going to make a new document. Now I like to make my document so I can print it or have the option to print it in the future. So my intent for now is print. If you want to choose web or digital publishing, those may be more fitting for you. I'm going to uncheck facing pages. Um, make sure facing pages is unchecked for this. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to landscape. I'm going to hit OK. This will make my blank document for me. It just has one page. If you forget to check facing uncheck facing pages you can choose file document set a, document setup and uncheck facing pages right here so you want to make sure that's unchecked i'm going to hit okay and make um i'm going to make this five pages so i went to my um, pages panel that's window pages and down here in my pages panel i'm just adding five pages total so these are my five pages um, in my pages panel and i like to start by making my buttons on the a master page you can either double click this little icon right here or you can go down to the um, pop up menu down here at the bottom and click on it and choose a master now I'm just doing it on a master so that I can um, have all my buttons repeat on every page in the same spot and I went ahead and made my graphics for this video um, so all of my graphics I just basically created in InDesign um, these are as you see are just rectangles and text boxes that's all these are nothing fancy here if you want to create your graphics in another program you can do that but I just made all my graphics right here in InDesign and I group my buttons together so that they're one piece just easier to move around what I'm gonna do now is on um, the first major part of this though I'm going to select my first button I'm gonna right click on my button and choose interactive convert to button so once you do that you'll see this little um, icon come up in your button that indicates that this is now a button it's not just a graphic so if you right click on the next one choose interactive convert to button it does the same thing now you can actually do this by selecting multiple items I'm gonna hold the shift key down and click on all the graphics that I have left all three button graphics I've left and I'm going to right click with all three of those selected and choose interactive convert to button it just does them all three at once so you can do them one at a time or do them all at once now if you ever need to edit the button you can choose you can select the button right click on it choose interactive and choose um, convert to object this just lets you takes that little icon away and lets you edit it um, like you would any normal InDesign graphic so now it's a button and now it's not so you'll see that graphic go away so now they're all buttons that first step is to make all my buttons and so that's done that's good it's all set and ready to go the second step is I need to make my landing pick landing place so I have the buttons but they don't have anywhere to go so here's how you make the landing spots and this is what they changed in Adobe InDesign CC I'm gonna go ahead and go to page one um, you can either double click the page icon or go down here to the drop down menu and so on page one I'm gonna select my type tool and I'm gonna actually do this by making text anchors so if you need to make text anchors for anything else this is how you do it um, I'm gonna make a text box and I'm gonna leave my cursor flashing like I'm getting ready to type only I'm not gonna really type anything I just hit backspace there I'm just gonna leave my cursor flashing like I'm getting ready to type now in the past I could right click and choose interactive and choose new hyperlink destination but they took that away from here so I actually have to go to my hyperlinks panel to do this now so I'm gonna to go to window interactive there it is interactive and choose hyperlinks hyperlinks panel looks like this and it has a little flyout menu or pop out menu if you click that little icon in the upper right corner you can um, bring that flyout menu out and choose new hyperlink destination there so they kinda hit it and moved it in a different spot now what I want is a text anchor which is the default setting so I wanna leave that as text anchor and I'm gonna name this page one and, I, and you can name it text anchor you can name it whatever you want I'm just gonna call it text anchor so I know um, that I created it I'll type Z at the end just so I know that I created it so that's the name of the landing spot where I'm gonna go 
hit OK, you don't see anything change really, um, but I know that did work because I've done it in the past, and you'll actually see where it's located in, in a second. Now I'm going to go down to page two, and you have to do this on every page. So make a text box, click the flyout menu in the hyperlinks panel, choose new hyperlink destination, go ahead and type out your name. This will be page two text anchor, hit OK, that's it. And it's the same for the third page, text box, new hyperlink destination, this will be page three text anchor, and hit OK. Now if you decide you want to, um, let's say you make your text box, you get distracted or whatever, and you, you go to a selection tool or you go to a different tool, um, this is what has happened to me in the past. You'll see that my cursor is now not flashing. You can go to the hyperlinks panel, you can choose new hyperlink destination, but look at what happens. It won't let you choose text anchor because that cursor is not flashing. So if that happens to you, that's because you need to have the cursor flashing like that. So you switch back to your type tool, make sure your cursor is flashing, and do follow the process from there. Now, the, these text boxes that I'm making, this is page four, right here, hit OK. These um, text boxes I'm making, I'm putting the middle of the, I am putting them in the middle of the page, not really aligning them to anything. These can be anywhere on your page. Um, I'm making them in a prominent position. You won't be able to see those, these text boxes because I haven't typed anything in them and there is no stroke or, or background to the text boxes. So you won't be able to see them. So you can move them wherever you want. You can move them behind objects. You can move them to the top of the page, the bottom of the page, wherever. They just have to be on the page somewhere. You can make them bigger, smaller, whatever you want. Um, they don't have to be a specific size. Um, the other thing I do like to do is with the text box, I'll see these text boxes floating around sometimes and I'll, I'll be like, oh, I made a mistake and I'll forget what I did that for. So what I like to do is select the text box, choose object lock. That will prevent me from locking that text box in the future. And so I'm going to do that for all my text boxes. I'm going to select my text box, choose object lock. Again, I'm on my selection tool, the very top tool and just select your text box. You'll see a little icon for a lot come up on some of them if they're big enough. And so select your um, text box, choose object lock. You see the shortcut for that is Command L on a, on a Mac or Control L on a PC. So if you click on your text box, hit Command L if you're on a Mac or Control L if you're on a PC, it locks it for you. And so cl click it, Command L. Now all my text boxes are locked just to prevent me from deleting them in the future. So that's, that's most of the process. I've got my buttons set. I've got my landing spot set. Now the only thing is I've got to connect them together. So I'm going to go back to the pages where my buttons are located. That was on A master for me. And I'm going to click on my button to set it. Now to set it, I need to do that in the buttons panel. That's window interactive buttons and forms right there. So in the Buttons and Forms panel, you'll see that this button automatically named, InDesign automatically named this for me, Button 1. You can rename it if you want. It has on Release or Tab. I'm not going to change that. I'm, all I'm going to change is I'm going to click this little plus icon. I'm going to choose Go to Destination. And when you do that, the destination that comes up is automatically set to the first text anchor that you created, which for me was Page 1 Text Anchor Z. So that lets me know that I created it. Um, so that that's set. That's all you got to do. I'm going to click the page two button, click the plus icon, choose go to destination. I'm going to choose page two text anchor. Boom. That's set. It's good to go. Page three, you can do the same thing. Um, by the way, if you want these to be rollover buttons, you can, you can click on release or tap and change it to rollover buttons if you want to do that. Um, I don't, I've done that in the past. Sometimes it's neat to do. Um, click the action, go to destination. Um, you only want to have one, so if you if you accidentally have two, just hit the subtract button, get rid of the second one, and this will be page three, and so forth. So you do that for every button. Now you'll notice also, um, this is page four, and this one's page five. You'll notice also these top settings are uh, what they call global. That means they'll work for Swift and PDF. If you look down here, you have a go to page choice. So if you're only doing a Swift, you can do a go to page command and choose what page right there, but it will only work for Swift. 
So these are Swift only commands. You also have some PDF only commands down here at the bottom. Um, but I want to do it on a PDF. That's why I'm showing this video because I really want to go to a destination. Now, if you have two, again, it tends to they tend to get tangled up and they tend to not work as well. So I'm going to delete that first one and I'm going to choose go to destination and choose page five. Um, notice you can also choose go to first page, go to last page, go to previous page, go to URL. So you could choose go to next page and make these go to the next page. Those are really easy to create. Um, you don't even need text anchors for those. Um, you also notice that you can make these into rollover buttons if you want to do that in the future. I will do that in a future video and show how to create these into rollover buttons. So that's it. That should work. You can test it out several ways. I usually like to go ahead and export it to test it out, but you can choose Window Interactive Swift Preview. Now this is a Swift preview. Um, what I'd recommend doing is click the flyout menu, choose Preview Document and then it lets you see the document. You may have to hit play. Let's see if it works without play. You don't have to hit play for this one, but I can click on the buttons and you see it jumps between pages. Now I also mentioned at the outset, um, I'm, I was gonna show you how to do forward and back buttons. I'll do that in a second. Let me go ahead and try out the, the page buttons by choosing file export. This is how you save your file. Um, under format you see I have flash player saved I'm gonna do that in a second as well I'm gonna first choose Adobe PDF interactive um, you cannot choose Adobe PDF print or it will not work so uh, print PDF will not work in fact if you choose file Adobe PDF presets these are all print presets so they do not work you have to go file export choose Adobe PDF interactive and then save it as the file name you want it to save as I'll do this test two. I'll hit save. Um, in this dialog box, you probably won't have to change anything. I'm just going to leave it as pages and leave the resolution as is and hit OK. And it's going to bring it up for me. And I can click between the pages like I did in the intro. And you see that I can either scroll between the pages um, like a normal PDF, or the nice thing is you can jump between pages as well. So that works. It looks like it works as a, sw as a PDF. Um, I'll try it as a Swift file export choose format flash player swift hit save um, and I'm gonna hit OK and that opens in your browser and you can jump between pages like you see here so that works as well I'm gonna go back to end here and so for the forward and back buttons they're really easy um, you can create your own and would encourage you to do it it's really easy you can also go to the buttons and forms panel that I already have open click on the flyout menu in here choose sample buttons and forms um, it will bring up sample buttons and forms that Adobe has already created in advance these buttons are um, done they're already buttons they're already linked um, you can see I just grabbed number 139 and just drug it out and 140 I'll just drag it out I'll select both of those make them bigger by um, grabbing the corner and holding down shift um, I'll close out that buttons and forms dialog box. If you click on the forward button, you'll see that the action's already set up to go to next page. You could have chosen that by choosing the plus icon, choose go to next page. This already done though. It's actually a rollover button as well, so that's kind of nice. And this back button is going to previous page. It's a rollover button as well. So these are already set. So if you want forward and back buttons, they're already done for you. Um, I would you probably want to make your own but um, you can try those out as well so I'll just export those again as a um, interactive PDF hit save hit replace hit OK it's gonna export it now in this dialog box it's saying because I added those colors to the um, document it's saying this was a print PDF my colors might not match on screen like they will on print and you see these are little hover rollover buttons you had a little shadow there um, so it does go forward it does go back real super easy now on my channel I um, appreciate you watching this video I hope this helps on my channel I actually do have multiple versions of this so if you use if you have to use an, an older version of InDesign I have videos for CS6 CS5 and CS4 I also have made a video of how to do an interactive PDF in Acrobat and I have a number of other videos on how to use different Adobe programs. So this was how to create an Adobe interactive PDF in Adobe InDesign Creative Cloud. And so I hope this is beneficial to you and I thank you for watching.